Welcome to my channel where engineering and design meet. In this exciting tutorial, we'll be diving into the world of Fusion 360 to model a quick return mechanism from scratch. Join me as we explore the intricacies of this fascinating mechanical system and learn how to bring it to life using Fusion 360's powerful CAD tools. A quick return mechanism is a mechanism commonly found in machines like shapers and mechanical presses. It converts rotary motion into reciprocating motion with varying speeds, allowing for efficient cutting or shaping operations. In this video, I'll guide you step-by-step -step through the process of modeling the quick return mechanism, unlocking its secrets along the way. All right, so let me stop this animation. We got those four parts, base, slider, disc, and crank, and three sketches, one a little complex, but two very simple ones. And then we get those joints, revolute joints and slider, and the tangent relationship twice, one time up here, the other time here. All right, so let's get started with modeling. So here I am in an empty file, and I'll start my first sketch on the front plane with the center point rectangle. From the origin, I go out and dimension that with a width of 122 and a height of 12. I'll add a two-point rectangle, catch that midpoint, and go up here. Dimension that um, with a width of 16. And a height of 166. I'll add some more two-point rectangles. One down here, one over there, one here. I think I'll hide the constraints so you can see that better. And um, dimension that from the bottom with 10. This is four. There is a vertical distance of 72. That again is four. Then here, from the top, that is 3. That dimension is 16. That length is 12. I'll make one offset of this line going down here at minus 22. I will model, I will sketch uh, line here, construction line, make that eight millimeters long. Um, let me pull that out here. This one here over here. And then um, a hard line, so to say. Here, give that a constraint here and an angle of 18. Here, let me place that there. Mirror that, those two objects, that's the dovetail over that line. I missed something here, huh? Now, 
What is this here? Okay, there's an, a gap. I'll make that coincident here. And then mirror that. Okay. Those two objects over that line. Okay. We need one more two point rectangle from that midpoint here up there. Dimension that again with four. And then one more two point rectangle here. And another one over there. Give that a dimension of 32, width of 8. That distance here is 2. That again is 4. And now let's see. I need one dimension here. That is 6. Then that vertical constraint here. One more over there. All that is fully defined. And then one more between those. All right, so let me pull that here and here. Okay, so if you need more time, just pause the video. I will continue with my first extrude of that region. Operation is a new component. It will be a symmetric extent and the overall length is 102. Okay. I'll make that sketch number one visible again. And make another extrude up here on that region. Again, that will be symmetric. Joining to our component. And the dimension is 188. Okay, next is the extrusion of this region. Again, symmetric, overall length is 18 joining. Okay, I think I need to adjust that extrusion here. That's an overall whole length dimension of 188. Okay. Next, I will go into the revolve. Take that region down here with that axis joining to our part. And once more, this region joining with that axis. Okay, so that is component number one here. Make a right click, rename that base. Next, an extrude of these two regions here. That'll be the next component with the symmetric direction overall length is uh, 22. Okay, I'll add a revolute to that, a revolve of that region around that axis joining. All right. Um, 
So that is our slider. Right click, rename slider. And I press A for appearances and give that a, from the paint folder red to our component. Close. Then another revolve of this region as a new component around that axis. Okay, do that one more time of that region up here with that axis joining. All right, and give that again a different color, green. Yeah, I'll hide sketch number one and start another sketch on this face. And that'll be uh, a slot, a center point arc slot. I place that center point right here. Go over here, there, like this. Um, press L and X for construction geometry and place these two lines. And that way I can dimension that angle with a 46 degrees. And I'll dimension that radius with four millimeters. And that arc at 26. And that finishes that sketch. And I'll extrude that, removing, cutting from our um, body here. I accept that. And make a circular pattern of features, that feature, the last one, with um, that axis. Three times. OK. And I'll add a chamfer, click on that face, press 2, or 1 maybe, 1, OK. So that's it. Well, maybe I will make another chamfer of um, those edges with um, four milliliters. Next, I'll start a new sketch on this face. I go into the slot command, send up to center slot. Take this center here, go up here somewhere, drop that off and like this. With P, I will project a couple of edges. That one, that one, that one, and that one. Then I'll dimension this line with 172. And that um, radius with 8. I need to make another slot here, center to center. Take that center point, drop that there, give that a dimension of 60. And with the equal command, select that circle and that edge and um, this should be straight so I take the vertical command all right we get that um, next we need to make a cut out here so one more time with that slot command center from that center go up here somewhere there, again, that equal relationship between those two here, 
and maybe a coincident relationship between that center point and that um, arc. That's it for that sketch. And we can go one last time in that extrude command, take that region, and we go minus four to form a new component. All right. Okay, so the last component here, which one is that? That that one. I'll rename that disk. And this one here, I'll rename crank. And again, change the appearance of that, make it blue. All right. Okay, so that's that's it for the modeling part of this exercise. I will pull things apart here, and then we will assemble them. Well, we will start with the base. Make a right click here and ground that. Then press J. Um, check that we get the revolute joint, hover over that edge, and place that where it had been. Um, do that one more time with that edge over here. All right, we got a preview what that does. And now we need a slider made here for that part. So we go to join, go over to motion, go to slider, go on that edge here um, with the Z axis right on that edge. Do that one more time here. The Z axis is the blue one. I accept that. And now we will apply the tangent relationship here. So we take that cylindrical face here and that face of our crank, accept that, and do that one more time between that face here and that one. All right. Now let's analyze the motion. We go to our joints body uh, folder to the first revolute, right click on that and animate joint relationship. And that wraps up today's video. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more exciting projects and tutorials. Until next time, happy modeling.